Good morning, besties. Welcome to my channel, Life with Sheridan. I'm your girl, Sheridan. Did you all get into last night's episode of Growing Up Gospel, aka Growing Gospel? I did. I want to talk about it before we get into it. I will say that I give it a 10 out of 10. I absolutely recommend. This is my show right now. This is my show right now. I will say before we get there that I don't know why Tasha had on her Celebration of Gospel dress at the end of the episode, but let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So if y'all see me looking down, I am looking at my notes. Also, I did live tweet last night. It is so funny um, looking at the Grown and Gospel hashtag and live tweeting with everyone else. So, if you would like to live tweet with us, <laughs> like I'm heading this up, right? If you want to live tweet, join me. My Twitter is at Sheridan S. Davis, okay? I really want to make all my social media life with Sheridan, but somebody on Instagram got that name. I was thinking about reporting them and just going ahead and taking it, but we'll see what happens. All right. So anyway, we see in the beginning of the episode, Bree is um, asking Jay about Elijah Carlos. Is Jay married? Tell us. Tell the people. But anyway, um, she's asking him about Elijah and Jay is letting her know that Elijah is very extra and a little bit messy, but it is what it is. So Tasha and Nikki are getting waxed. And we gon' end thinking that Tasha finna get that good girl waxed. I'm thinking she finna get her good girl waxed. Turn out later in the episode, good girl been a bad girl. But anyway, <laughs> I think she's finna get her good girl waxed. And Tasha's like, mm, no, Nikki, I'm getting my legs waxed, which is cool. I've never gotten my legs waxed. Okay, let me tell y'all something. Speaking of getting good girl wax, I completely identified with Tasha because I got my good girl wax one time. One time. I want to do it again, y'all. I want to do it again. But let me tell y'all what happened. So, for my 30th birthday, y'all saw, maybe y'all have, maybe y'all haven't. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. For my 30th birthday, I wanted to get the good girl wax for um, my trip to... Las Vegas. Now, ain't nobody seeing my good girl. That's the difference between me and Tosh. <laughs> and so, uh, I wanted to get it with... That could have sounded shady, and that wasn't meant to be that way. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to get it away for my uh, trip, whatever, because I wanted the, you know, the swimsuits to lay right. The white one was kind of high waist, so I wanted to lay right and look right and look all cute and stuff. Baby, I went to the wax place believing that I was going to get a Brazilian situation, it turned into a bikini. I couldn't take it no more. So, Tasha, I don't blame you. I do not blame you at all. Um, and before y'all ask, my shoulder still needs healing. I just got out. The, I didn't want to put it on right now, but when I get dressed, I will. So, anyway, um, I just got a question because we found out that Tasha's man is going to come see her. And I didn't know they were still married. I knew they was, I thought they were like officially divorced. Um, but my question to y'all is, do any of the grown and gospel, grown up gospel people live with their spouses? Any of them. Any of them. All right. Um, so anyway, we see Elijah. He's planning the photo, photo shoot for Brie. I'm like, this child still trying to have Brie. Okay. So Gwen, the party planner that he was snapping on last week, is there. And we found out that she is legendary. And she used to do events for Aretha Franklin, da 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 da, da all the Detroit people. So they're scouting locations, but they're not really scouting locations because they're at the location they're going to film it. But okay. So, um... He says that he asked Bree to come through because, not to apologize, but because he wants to clear the air. And I was like, okay. So he says he doesn't know how, <laughs> once she got there, he's like, I don't know how what I did came across you like that and made you go off. And I'm like, Elijah, you you don't listen well because, he, first of all, he sounded sincere when he was saying this. And I'm like, I'm confused at your confusion because she was very clear. So why she was upset, she said verbatim, you hurt my feelings. You hurt her feelings by putting her things in the trash. 
and I would have hurt your fingers. Like, no. No, I don't care what you think is cute or not. You're not going to throw my stuff in the trash with the pizza and the drinks and all that. You're not. You're just not. And so, um, she lets him know it wasn't just the boots. The boots was the tipping point. Like, you had been poking and poking and poking and poking and poking, which he had since episode one. And now we at three. He had been poking. And at that point, she had had it. And he was like, well, I just want everybody around me. I try to push them towards their destiny. I try to push them towards excellence. And Bree said, the thing is, I don't mind you pushing people towards excellence, but I didn't ask you for your opinion. And I said this episode one, nobody asked Elijah for his help. She said, I didn't ask you for your opinion. The You want to know why I didn't ask you? Because opinions are like buttholes. Everybody got one. She should have also added. And everybody think everybody else is saying. Um, but opinions are like buttholes in Elijah and said, yeah, but some people's are bleached. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> What did that have to do with the price of tea in China? So I guess he's saying this. <laughs> Some people's opinions aren't better than others. But that when I tell y'all, that was hilarious to me. I was cracking up. Elijah, again, feels like it's his job to push people into their destiny, etc. But he doesn't realize that his delivery, because he's like, am I mean? Am I mean? He doesn't realize that his delivery can sometimes push it, push people over the edge. And once Bree explained this to her, um, to him, Elijah apologized. And we accept because I think Elijah does put 20 on 10. Um, I don't know if that's just for the camera or if that's who he is. But in this scene, he actually sounded sincere. I'm going to be honest. This whole episode was given very much sincere. If I could have renamed it anything, I would have renamed it Revelations and Exaltation. Because, like, they was lifting up Jesus with the prayer. And they was giving all their, I mean, spilling all their tea throughout the episode. Speaking of, Brie and Tasha meet up. And we found out that both Brie and Tasha don't work at the strip club. Now, I already kind of knew that Tasha had a strip club pass. I didn't know she was singing. In my head, she was dancing. I, I got to remember that it's more than one occupation at the strip club, okay? Because if you say you worked at the strip club, y'all know who else used to work at the strip club that's a preacher's kid? Sarah Jakes. Y'all got to read her book. What's it called? Lost and Found. She talked about she used to work at the strip club, too. And she was, what was she, a bottle girl or something? I don't know. But as soon as I hear strip club, I, it's just in my mind, you a dancer. In my mind. But it's so many other uh, positions to have at the strip club. I mean, there are hot wing makers. There are bouncers. There are um, security bottle girls. Yeah, it's a lot of jobs at the strip club. Maybe I need to go and become a chaplain at the strip club so the girls can feel like they can have, they can lean on somebody and have Jesus. Amen. Um. So anyway, they both let us know that they worked at the strip club. Bree was actually a dancer though. And I'm wondering if that's where the distance came between her and her father. Because if you notice, she said last week when Elijah embarrass her and let me go back and say I actually do believe her tears okay <laughs> um I don't think any of their relationship is ex exaggerated um that's just what someone shared with me but anyway um when uh she was offended about Elijah she said she was so offended because she feels like there was another man telling her that the decisions she had made weren't good decisions or judging the decisions that she had made have there been some ramifications uh have has the consequence of you being a dancer has that drawn a wedge between you and your dad Bri I would like to know that like I'm going to get my channel up because I need to interview her. Like, if y'all have read my book series, um, Church Girls, Brie, there are some parts of Brie that remind me 
of um of Selena and some of Miriam and not the bad stuff, but the good stuff. So check out my um series Church Girls by Sheridan S. Davis is on Amazon.com. The whole series is four books. Um, so y'all can read on Kindle or whatever. Let me know what y'all think. But I if y'all read that series, it feels like I wrote grown and gospel, right? <laughs> All right, but anyway. So um Brie tells us that the reason why she became a dancer was to help her mom because her mom had gone from being married to this gospel superstar to being single and a single parent and having to do stuff on her own. And I think that's admirable. Um, Brie, you paid your way through school like Diamond. Go ahead, girl. And so Brie and Tasha tells us both that they have been attracted to women, you know, um, at one point in time and they're just so open and honest and we don't always get that um and so I'm very happy this this kind of content beats the mess this kind of content is better than well Bree said well Elijah said help Bree because we need to pat down her afro all that it's so much better and I really appreciated these these women just being able to be transparent because so many other parents' of kids and preachers' kids and artists' kids have gone through the same thing. So I appreciated it. Um, and then they ended the conversation in prayer. So we get to the photo shoot. The a photo shoot that Elijah has planned for Brie. And he's like telling her we kinda wanna push the envelope or whatever. And she like, I'm not doing the, I'm not doing the bed. I ain't doing I ain't gospel, but I'm godly and we ain't gonna be all you ain't gonna put me to bed. Y'all remember that song? But anyway, um, they give her a party city stripper wig. It was giving me Kim Zolciak as I as I was watching it, like immediately. I was like, we own the club, oh yeah, we own the life. I'm just like, <laughs> and I am not leaving till I see daylight. Don't be tired of but I hated that wig a lot. Like, I get that y'all feel like superstar means long hair. I think Brie looks great with her natural hair. I didn't like the strip wig at all. But that last picture that they showed, she looked beautiful. You better have them full lips, Brie, with the red. All right. So then we see Tasha sit down with her mama, who I love. Okay, y'all. If y'all are a fan of Lisa Page Brooks, what's y'all favorite song? Or what's y'all favorite Whitney song or song that she's led? My favorite song that she has led outside of Whitney's is going to be His blood still works and I'm glad to report. But Sean Mitchell, my favorite song that she sings with Whitney's is Justified by faith. Now I have peace with God through my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's my song, honey. I they used to play that on 1390, which is the radio that it used to be gospel, but that's inspirational radio station here in Chicago all the time. But anyway, she sits down and talks to her mom, and they're talking about her marriage. And of course, they're talking about how God hates divorce, and He does. And there was a couple people online that are like, This is cringy. If I need to get out of my marriage, I will. Her mother never told her she had to stay in. She literally said, God hates divorce. And then she turned around and asked her, do you want to speak with an attorney? So, of course, God hates divorce. They don't want to um, brag about divorce. They don't want to boast about divorce. They don't want to glory in divorce. They don't want to have a divorce if they don't have to. Her mama is not telling her, don't get divorced, obviously, because she's been divorced. So, what they're trying to say is... They want to, um, they want to exhaust all options. That's basically what they're saying. Fight for the marriage if you can. Um, and so I remember Tasha starts talking about when she got married. I remember when she got married to this husband. She looked great. Tasha and her mom are talking about the fact that Tasha doesn't really know what to do. Apparently Tasha left the house because the husband kept talking about he wanted to be divorced. And he think he gonna file for divorce. And so she, I guess she was calling his bluff, but girl, 
Yeah. Um, so anyway, Tasha meets up with Shayna and I'm just like, babe, we need to integrate Shayna into this show a little bit more. I don't know if it's because of her worship leader background that she doesn't want to be all the way integrated or was she was her in group scenes not fascinating enough or something because um, I want her to feel like one of the crew. Right now, Shayna feels like a friend of and not like she's holding up proverbial peach. What would they hold in Detroit? A mic? No. A car? It's the Motor City. I don't know. <laughs> Why my mama laughing in the background? <laughs> okay, so... Um... <laughs> So Tasha meet up with Shayna before Shayna gets there because Shayna is the late boots. Uh, Tasha FaceTimes Elijah, who is still in his Versace robe outside. This is episode three. In every episode, we're getting clips of Elijah in his Versace robe outside. We get it. You got a Versace robe. Praise God. You're outside in the wintertime. Chest out every episode. <laughs> I don't understand this. So anyway, Elijah wants to be kept on speaker while they talk or put in um have Tasha put in her um her air air what y'all call them AirPods or maybe like you like me you got the Raycons because we support black businesses amen and so anyway um, Tasha's like no and to be honest that would have been me like girl put me in your ear <laughs> so I can tell you what to say <laughs> and so when Shayna shows up. Tasha automatically looked defensive. I'm sorry. Tasha didn't look open to anything Shayna was going to have to say. And so Shayna starts to meet off with prayer and Tasha looked like this. Tasha didn't want to start to meet off with prayer. Tasha didn't want... I don't think Tasha really, was really ready to meet. She had her mind up that Shayna had been talking crap about her, which I understand because her husband told her that. And I'm just like... Why your husband tell you that and don't and gonna say, well, don't say anything, but Shayna told me that da, 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 da. I'm just trying to keep you, you know, um, let you know what's going on. And I'm just like, okay, because it's your husband sassy. I just want to know. I, that was a very sassy. I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. Don't tell me not to say anything. Um, and then, and just drop a bomb like a friend of mine for 20 years have been talking about me behind my back. Like, nah, if, if Shayna told you these things, why can't me and you sit down with Shayna? That's crazy to me. But let me tell y'all what kind of vibe her husband gives me. And I, if you're not spiritual, I don't think you're going to understand this. If you're not churchy, I don't think you're going to understand this. I feel like, and I don't know this man, so I don't know this to be true. I could be completely off base. But I feel like her husband may weaponize spirituality against her. So sometimes when you are prophet or um, are prophetic, you will be able to hear conversations or see certain things in the spirit realm. I want to know, did Shayna tell you that this happened or were you like eavesdropping in the spirit? Because it it is you manipulating the situation. I want to speak to the husband. That's who I want to talk to. But anyway, moving on, Tasha has a violinist that she has brought in to set the mood for her husband. So I think the only way that the people on this cast know how to set the mood is with... um. Party City Rose Petals because she did it. Um, what's my girl name? Nikki did it, and I love me some Nikki. Nikki did it, even though her husband was through the phone and not even on FaceTime. So everybody set the mood, mean Party City Roses. I need to, I'm writing this down because I'm single. And so when my husband comes, I need, okay, checklist. Number one, Party City um, Rose Petals. And number two, body kind dress. Um, Tasha... <laughs> Tasha in this new dress. Now, Tasha can dress sometimes. Don't get me wrong. Like, when she's on stage or whatever, she looks great. Uh, even her confessional looks, she looks cute. But I think this dress was inappropriate for, like, my man, my man, my man. 
Tasha looked like she was going to the celebration of gospel. And I was like, what? Why are you looking like a Clark sister for your man? And it's no shade. The Clark sisters are very cute. But this is, you want to be sexy. You look like you was finna sing, you don't know like I know. I didn't appreciate that, okay? But anyway, Tasha herself is very beautiful, but I don't know why she was dressed like that. I just wanted her to call Jay Bowling. That's where all the church girls go <laughs> and get something sexy. Okay, so anyway, her husband walks in and they actually hug. And I don't know if it's that the cameras were there, so he was guarded. Um, but he visibly looks hurt and guarded. And so Tasha says, I'm glad you came. I didn't think you would come. And he said, I didn't either. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, at least pretend for me. Okay. And so um, you can literally see like the hurt in the wall he's built up. And so she gives him a couple gifts. And one of them is a lot because she betrayed his trust. And I was like, antennas up because... I remember when they had separated and it was some drama with the church or something like that. And it was on Larry Lab and Tasha had like went off because Larry like talked about it or something like that. I don't know if this was this husband or the first husband. I don't know. Um, and so anyway, um, she also got him a t-shirt that says stop drinking because she says some of the choices she has made is because of drunkenness and I was just like whoa well you gotta be transparent for the people of God all right Tasha praise God so she knows she needs deliverance in that area so she, and I could tell that clearly he agrees because he's like mm. he ain't say nothing about that lock he ain't say nothing about that betrayal he because I think he's still on that betrayal but baby that stopped drinking, he was like, mm, yeah, drunkard. That's how he was looking. But anyway, he receives the gifts and tells her thank you. And then he says he got her a pricey gift. And she didn't like that. Maybe because she spent, she went to five and below for his gifts. She didn't like the fact that he said he got her a pricey gift. But her gifts had sentimental value. This man gets her an expensive watch, and I want to know what is expensive to you because when they had zoomed up on it in the end. Okay, anyway, um, he got her an expensive watch, and he said because time will tell. Basically, what they're gonna do, time will tell, and I didn't like that at all, and neither did Tasha. I was with Tasha on this. But anyway, Tasha changed into a quote-unquote sexier dress. It was sexier. It wasn't sexy. She could have wore this the whole dinner. It, she looked like she was going to salsa dancing. Um, it was sexier, but production ain't nothing because they could have told the baby her bra was showing. But she looked good. Her legs. I said, you better give us legs and hips and body body her legs was on display boobs was on display because she said her husband is always complimenting her on her breasts and her legs so i said yes give him something he can feel in the words of aretha franklin mm -hmm. and so tasha comes out and says she wants him to lay the oil on her you're gonna call me danielle and put me in your lion's den you know what tasha is my kind of, t of churchy I don't like when she was messy for the first couple episodes, but this is my kind of carrying on when it comes to churchy. I don't think she's serious, you guys, because some of y'all are dragging her. Church women got to do better. She's not being serious. She literally said she wanted him to laugh. That's why she was using the Bible. Y'all so, ugh, stop judging her. But anyway, um, so she, um, is my kind of churchy and he looks like and he shook his head and said only you and I was like is it because the cameras are here or what like I was embarrassed for Tasha for you to reject her like that and Tasha said it reminded her of when they first got married and she would like spend all this money on expensive lingerie and he wouldn't even look up from his phone. Um, I got a couple questions. Number one, do men's, men's 
y'all really be caring about lingerie? Like, let me know because I I need to write these notes down for when it's my turn to get married. And do y'all care about that? Now, I, I've been seeing some men say they prefer t-shirt and panties. Like, I don't know. Y'all let me know down below, ladies, because it really, the men don't be watching like that. But do y'all men... Do y'all men care about the lingerie? Of course, you want to put on a presentation, but spending all this money like Tasha was talking about, y'all care about that? Secondly, this time when y'all first got married, man, the guy, okay, is it that you were so busy with the church stuff? Because that can happen that you were doing way more for the church than you were for your spouse. Or, I'm just going to ask, don't be mad at me. Is Tasha a beard? I'm just going to ask because I don't understand. It's different if down the line y'all kind of lose the drive. Maybe I don't know what's what. But when y'all first got married, that happened. That don't make sense to me. I don't. That doesn't make sense to me. So, is he a sugar foot and then you was a beard? I don't know. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I really just want to know. And so, I got second-hand embarrassment for watching. And she says, well, let me just say it. I apologize for cheating on you. And I was like, <laughs> whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Like, that was I was not expecting that. The man put his glasses on because he was not expecting it either. His eyes got big, like. And like he he showed a reaction and pulled back real quick. She said, I'm gonna apologize now. I, you know, I didn't just wake up one day and decide to cheat on my husband, but I'm a woman who needs affection, love, etc. I can't go without that. Um, and that doesn't justify what I did, but I can't go without that, and I'm not gonna let anyone hold anything over my head. And so my question then becomes, was this actually an apology? Like, are you apologizing or were you just trying to beat him to the punch so he couldn't say anything about it on the TV? I don't know. Was the apology for him or was it self-serving? That's basically what I'm asking here. Um, she caught him off guard clearly. And I was just like, wait. <laughs> and so... At that point, he kind of looks at her after her speech and he was like, cut the cameras off. And she was like, yeah, y'all could take our mics off. And he cried, she cried. And I'm like, maybe he looks shocked like that because even though y'all are trying to work it out, perhaps he didn't want all of Israel and Judea to know that you cheated on him. I would be interested to see what's going to happen next week. Are y'all tuning in for Grown and Gospel, a.k.a. Grown Up Gospel? Y'all, why, why they tell me we only got six episodes? We TV, y'all got to do better, beloveds. Y'all haven't done right since the break. Since let's get, let's get it together. All right, I love y'all. Love y'all for watching. Don't forget to like. I hope you share. And um, comment to in the comments below. Let's talk about what happened. Um, if y'all could, please go ahead and subscribe if you like what you see. And uh, yeah, I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.